Kevin Cohen from Live Aquarium, so excited to see you here at MACNA, of course, and you've got your beautiful livestock. Yes, it's great to be here. You know, we love to come to these shows and, and interact with all the hobbyists and especially all the hardcore fish geeks like yourself, you know. You know, every time I come, you have another fish I want. It's, it's driving me crazy. Now, are these named yet? What's going on here? Yeah, these are named. Um, these are uh, Nematiliotris uh, hellfrischii, the hellfrisch firefish. Um, it's gr a great fish, uh, you know, ideally to put in a smaller display. Um, very vibrant colored. They stay out in the open. Makes it really interesting. Add some activity and coloration to your to your display tanks. Um, love bringing some some unique corals here as well. Uh, we try to uh, show off some nice Australian scalemia here. This is a, a, a gold euphilia torch coral. Um, just really really colorful stuff. Get people really curious and interested. And in, you know, I like setting up little nano tanks like this. Um, as long as you put very few fish and the appropriate fish in these tanks. Um, they make an awesome display for your office or, you know, for, for even your kids, too. Well, let me ask you this. I see these little fish here in the back that's with the dots. Are these safe with these corals? Yeah, there's a called orange-spotted filefish, and, you know, these fish have very specific feeding requirements. They're not ideal for a small polyp stony coral display. Um, they eat Acropora polyps. Um, the reason I brought them here is because uh, Matt Peterson's actually spawned and raised, uh, the, you know, these fish, and I wanted to show people that, you know, these fish can live in a, in a home aquarium. The, the biggest issue with these, uh, these animals here is it's the chain of custody where these fish in this display here have come from Fiji. Uh, they're collected um, pretty much 20 minutes away from where they're being held at. They're purged for a day or two and then sent to the United States. Um, years ago, these fish always got a bad rap because the supply chain is so long on these fish that by the time we actually would get them, um, they'd be anemic and starve to death. Yeah, so I was saying they're starving. Yes. So if, the chain of custody has a huge impact on how well orange spot filefish are going to do. You know, we've sold a lot of pairs of these fish in the last few months. Um, we bring them into our facility in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. We feed them really well. We condition them well. We get them eating prepared foods. Um, so we start out with things like uh, uh, OVA, which is a product made by Quality Marine. It's it's basically uh, it's tiny. yeah, t tiny, tiny little legs. Um, they're they're uh, crustacean eggs. Um, and then we'll convert them over to things like hikari mysis shrimp, um, try to get them on pellet foods and so forth. But, you know, basically to try to get a good fish to the customer so that they can hopefully spawn and raise these fish and, and get some into the marketplace, some captive grown ones. You know, I'm going to put you on the spot here for just a second, but don't worry. I always thought Live Aquarius should sell you a fish with the food that fish eats. Like when you package it, here's your fish, here's the food we use because it's happy. Yeah. Bundle it, buy it, add it on. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, we feed a lot of frozen foods. Um, we feed a lot of Hakari mysis, Pisine energetics mysis shrimp, um, even even brine shrimp, spirulina, um, you know, sprayed brine shrimp. And we rinse the, these foods off really well, and then we'll we'll soak them in Celcon and amino acid supplements. So to send frozen foods along with these fish that we're we're doing, you know, kind of creates creates a little bit of a problem. But when you're buying a fish, does it list what foods you're using currently so they have a clue? Uh, we, we have a section on, on the Diver's Den site where you can, you can click on and you can go and you can see that if you purchase a butterfly fish, we feed it these, this brand of foods. Um, but yeah, it is difficult to say, you know, this exact species of fish eats this food. I know that chart's kind of general, but I think it gives people, you know, 95% of the time a, a perfect idea of exactly what foods are feeding the fish. See, for me, when I buy a fish, I want it to live. I don't want to have to buy two. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to try again. I just If you say, Mark, buy this food, I'm going to do it because you're selling it to me. And this is like when I buy a car, they give me tires. I accept them. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's important to me. And the whole reason that we do the Diver's Den stuff in, in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, is because, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about fish especially. And, and I want to make sure that, that some of these rare fish or more unique fish, that they're well conditioned. They're, they're eating prepared foods, and they've, they've been quarantined and adjusted to a captive environment prior to sending it to, you know, hardcore hobbyists like yourself. I want you to be really successful and everyone else to be successful with, with what they purchase. You know, educate yourself about the fish you're going to buy for your aquarium. Make sure that you have the right habitat and can provide the right husbandry for these fish. And, and if you can, I mean, there's some really unique stuff that makes just awesome awesome inhabitants for displays. You can really learn a lot from the interactions of some of these fish and, and invertebrates together and you know hopefully at Live Aquaria we're providing that that to the consumer. Well I feel your passion. I hope they feel your passion. So thanks for being on Reef Addicts and enjoy the rest of MACNA.